Can you hear me? Yep, I can. Okay, one second. I just need to grab my headset and we're good to go. Is the timer, is the timer out? Am I late? Damn it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. Pop in three more people. Into panelists. Oh, you're taking care of that? All right, perfect. Excellent. I think can, can you just give me some words here, Mon? I mean, uh, Sahaj, real quick, just so I can see if you're in my headset. Hello. All right, there, perfect. Okay. Sip of coffee. I might need to heat that up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to 96 Boards, <laughs> 96 Boards Open Hours. My name is Robert Wolf, 96 Boards Community Manager and Engineer. Today is Oh, shoot. February 7th. And you are watching episode 134. 134. I think we've yeah, officially passed the, the two year mark for for this uh, video broadcast, video podcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe one day we'll officially dub it a podcast. But yeah, so today we're going to be speaking with the one and only Sahaj Saroop who is uh, 96 boards, yay, who is the 96 boards applications engineer. You've been, you've been with Lenaro for, for a year to, at least now, right? Over a year, almost two. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah. So um, we're going to want to hear your story here because, you know, I don't think you've really told us, I mean, we talked about it back when you first got hired, but, you know, Sahaj was actually a big community guy before he started working with us. And we were like, we want him, we need to get him on board. And, and that's how it kind of worked out. But yeah. So before we dive into the segment, which is Sahaj is going to show us a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Lately, we've been working on um, this new board from Aero Electronics built by Shira Tech, which is an FPGA mezzanine. The board allows you to bridge the 96 boards ecosystem into both Raspberry Pi and Arduino. So this basically means you can plug in and we'll show you all that. We'll show you the board and all this stuff. Sahaj is going to talk a lot more about it. But um, before that, uh, I'm going to share a few links here, right? So uh, we have some very interesting things going on right now. And the biggest thing that's going on is something that we're calling the 96 Boards Aero 2019 Collaborative Marketing Campaign, right? We'll just call it that. And this is this is a, a pretty cool thing that we're doing with Aero Electronics. They're one of our biggest 96 Boards partners. They are the ones who have been pumping out all this really cool 96 Boards tech. And um, we are doing a campaign with them where we're starting to launch a bunch of videos, content. We're building a bunch of cool stuff around their, their board. That's also why you're seeing us do this stuff on the FPGA mezzanine today. But um, they launched a new, a new a, uh, campaign page for 96 boards. So now if you want to build stuff with 96 boards, you can go to Aero Electronics site and you can see all the different 96 boards tech that they have there all on one page. So I'm going to start sharing these links here. Uh, we'll call this 96 boards arrow campaign page. And there, um, they, so from what I understand is they haven't all been uploaded yet. And I shared this a couple weeks ago, but uh, you'll at least find a bunch of them right now. And this is the page where you'll go to find all of the 96 boards that, that arrow sell. Uh, another thing that happened, and this is part of the campaign as well, is Sahaj and I are working on getting as many partners as possible together to build out these very fun promotional videos around pretty much every single board that Arrow has on their line cart. The first one, and this is a test, um, Sahaj, I think did a great job at, at editing this, but what we're doing is, 
we're kind of getting people into a, a Zoom call like this and we're filming it in scenes, filming, we're recording it in scenes and then Saha just stitching them all together. That is the first video that we've made. It's the new Chameleon 96 video. Um, if you're interested in checking out the Chameleon 96, awesome FPGA board by, uh, by Novtech and Aero Electronics and um, you can go explore that one. Now, uh, the last two things I have here, one is that Sahaj pushed out a video about the unboxing of the Sofon Edge. We kind of, I think, spoke about that the week before last in open hours and I unboxed mine, but now he did an official unboxing. So you can actually see what's going on in that box. And um, I'm not sure if he boots it up. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I will. And my last thing right here, cause I'll do more announcements at the end of the call, uh, is last week we spoke with Peter Robinson from Red Hat and Peter Robinson's awesome guy uh, does all of the Fedora IOT work. Well, I shouldn't say all, but he's a, he is the lead person behind the Fedora IOT movement. And he is also the one who is enabling all this on 96 boards. So uh, check out last week's open hours episode. You'll have a chance to hear what Peter has to say about Fedora, Fedora IOT, the progress that's happening around this, this initiative. And then of course, um, you know, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, subscribe, right? Because we have a lot of really cool stuff that keeps coming out. All right, Sahaj, that, that, that's it. You're up. What's up, buddy? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. So last time when we uh, looked at running something on the FPGA mezzanine, um, that was we, we used this particular board, uh, this particular shield, because at that time I had only... Uh, gotten access to the i squared c bus and this was before firm, firmware version one got released uh, and i'll go through the docs but i really want to show the demo first but um uh, back then we had no gpio control on this uh on, on the fpga mezzanine only i squared c pass through uh and then things got released and this is what we have so today i will be showing um a motor controller that's very famously used with arduino um at least, at least one shield and another thing if we have some more time. But uh, let me just see to... so so Sahaj, yeah. I wanna I wanna um yeah. I wanna really quickly kind of just once again give a kind of an overview of what's happening here. Um, so for for anyone who's watching who's not familiar, right? The ninety six boards ecosystem, the ninety six boards specification, is a consumer specification that allows um, chip vendors to basically put. Uh, their SOC, their system on chip on a universal footprint. So you can kind of see behind here, I have a bunch of boards. This isn't even, I don't believe this is even half of them, but uh, there's there's a, a bunch of these boards all on the same form factor, all different chipsets. Now, what Sahaj is doing is he has a mezzanine card, which is the equivalent to like a Raspberry Pi hat or an Arduino shield. The mezzanine card clips on top I'm, I'm going to try to pull down the FPGA one. Do I have it hanging up here? Oh, well, man, I, have, my... I have that on the screen, so I can probably show that. Yeah, so so you have you have just a uh, a a uh, mezzanine. I'm sorry, a, a baseboard, and then Sahaj is showing the the mezzanine card on his screen here. I'll pin, I'll pin yours real quick. So spotlight your video, and so basically what what you're seeing there is a is the FPGA board on top of a of a 96 boards consumer edition baseboard. And so I guess I'll let Sahaj explain the rest there, but I just wanted to give an overview. Yeah, so what happens with the, uh, with converting 1.8 volts to uh, something like five or 3.3 is that um, you need really fast uh, switching uh, to do that properly. And uh, a lot of the times uh, a normal level shifter um, doesn't really work all that well. So we have an FPJ that's doing all the manual level shifting. Um, it's level shifting mostly the buses like the I2C bus, uh, the SPI bus and, um, and UART. And then for all the other GPIOs, it, it actually, uh, you can manually control it using I2C commands. So we'll go into the depth uh, in a bit, but um, yeah, this is the setup. This is a very famous um, L, well, yeah, uh, L298N, wait, yeah, L298N um, motor controller. So 12 volts up or up to 12 volts. And then I think it's like 10 to 40 amps per motor. Uh, so a very famous one, You, if you search uh, 
Arduino motor controller, this is the stuff that comes up. Uh, so now the problem with this motor controller is it doesn't really like to work at uh, 1.8 volts. That is what the, um, the 96 volt specification provides. This likes to work at 3.3 to 5 volts and 3.3 volt level shifting is what the FPGA measurement provides. So I'm just going to uh, go ahead and run a small script uh, in a second. So uh, real quick, I just want to remind anyone who's who's watching both both uh, on the channel here uh, through Zoom or at YouTube on YouTube, um, you can you can go ahead and ask questions. So if you have questions, we're monitoring the channels. Uh, we'll bring them to Sahaj or myself. Hey, and you should be able to see that. It's moving. Um, so what it's doing is moving. Uh, like one rotation is so it's moving in one direction. It's switching up automated kind of this, this stuff just to uh, make it kind of um, like not complicated. So you can see it's working properly. Uh, and that's what it keeps doing. So, I mean, we could also look at the, uh, the code real quick and how it works. I'm just waiting for it to stop so I can close that. Okay, but Sahaj, let's ask, let me ask you a question here. So, like, what are the benefits of? I mean, you're running a little car, right? Let me yeah. let me fill your spotlight here for a second. But um, so you're running a little car. I still have your broken. Oh my god! <laughs> it's still here. Yeah. So this is the this is the uh, the first rover that you built. This is the carbon rover. Now let me ask you a question. Yeah. The carbon rover. You're talking about running this little tiny microcontroller, right? What would be the benefit of building a rover similar to this or what you're showing us, but with this full-fledged big old arm Cortex A device running on a on on an Arduino mezzanine? Like, what are the benefits of even doing that? Why not just use a little microcontroller like this? Well, the first thing why people go from Arduino to using something arm like a arm arm based device is they want to get video feed out of it, or they want to maybe control it over. Um, but they want to pro sometimes do, again, talking about the video feed, uh, some image recognition and have the robo automated uh, and stuff like that. So once you're going into heavy processing side of things, that's where you want to have the benefit of ARM um, uh, in there. And this is kind of where I, I think that the folks from, from UC Robotics with the Bubblegum 96 board, Bubblegum 96, they were doing, um what was it? the these robots that would map out an entire 3D printing lab because, yeah. you know, 3D printers are cool and everything. You could have these jobs that are going for 20 hours at a time or more, and you don't want to have to go, or you don't want to have to have someone have to monitor this. And every time a 3D printing job finishes, you have to go get the 3D printing piece off, et cetera, et cetera. I think they were making robots that would map the entire 3D printing lab. When a job finished, the robot would go get the, the part off of the, the machine and then place it somewhere else. I, I think that's what they were doing. But yeah, that would not be able to be done with a most likely mapping yeah. or doing point cloud kind of stuff on a on a little microcontroller. Gotcha. So like that's one of the benefits you can then, uh, it just opens up a lot more possibility because you have that sort of processing power with you. Um, so I'm really going to go and take a very quick look at the Cone. Uh, let me just open that up. I should Can you share that, that screen too? Uh, yeah, of course. So let's see. Let's look at the code. Share screen. By the way, anyone who's on YouTube, if you want to join us on Zoom, the link to the Zoom channel is in the description of the video. So we have a. Uh, we we can bring you in here, and you can join as an you can join as a panelist as well. We'll promote you up to that and you can turn your camera on you can join us in the conversation as well so you don't have to watch us on youtube you could watch you could join us on on zoom so this is this is the first of the shields that you're using right this is yeah. this is one of them and this uh, is the motor controller shield yeah so you can oh, i really want to know what you can see i i don't know what's visible i I can see the I can see your your little IDE there, and I can see the code, and you're scrolling down, but that's pretty much it. 
Yeah, yeah, then that's fine. So you just get uh, the FPGA mezzanine dot H and MRA dot uh, MRA I squared C dot H, and because the Arduino is just communicating with, uh, sorry, the the base board, your ninety six boards is just communicating with the um, with the FPGA mezzanine over I squared C. Uh, that's all you need. So. Uh, you create a I squared C context here for your base board and you know, uh, just the regular MRA stuff, uh, give it the uh, bus zero, uh, it's on I squared C zero. Um, and once you have all of that set up, uh, you can actually, there's a, a test register there. You can test whether the communication is working properly. You just write a, a simple, um, uh, write a simple, a byte and then you return that and test if that matches. Uh, there's also the FPGA version that you can take a look at. Uh, and then I have kept the functions as close to the uh, Arduino function. So pin mode, uh, you know, converts your pins, uh, changes your pin from input to output or vice versa. And then uh, if, and then we have the digital write function. The only addition is that you have to pass the I squared C uh, the I squared C context variable here. Now, uh, in the future, that I'm planning to remove that completely, so you don't have to copy that, and you can really copy a fair bit of pre-existing Arduino code, and that should all work. That's the end plan. But to just make things a bit more flexible, I've added that, uh, and I've left that in. So you still have to pass that, and then that becomes your, um, you know. You can you can just toggle the GPIO pins and the pin numbering matches the Arduino perfectly. So uh, if you have a code that already runs on Arduino, you just have to maybe um, edit a bit of things uh, and it should work fine. Uh, and maybe you can just take a look at the source here. So it's basically just uh, flipping bits uh, if you take a look at the documentation, which I'll go into earlier, uh, later on, um, yeah, it's just flipping bits depending on which pin you have to uh, choose and then just writes that to the I2C bus and the FPGA mezzanine is happy with that. Uh, I've also added a re register header. So if you want to, um, you know, do things manually, you can just pass the values to these specific registers uh, in your code and that would also work. Uh, just fine. Uh, I've also had the RPI one, the RPI bit still work in progress. I haven't added the particular functions for that, but the registers are available and you can, um, you can use that. So that was a quick look. I hope people got that. Yeah, I'm tempted to go, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go grab it. One second. You you keep going, Sahaj. I wanna grab my, um, I'm getting some feedback from someone. Hey, Sakash, I have a question there. Yeah. Uh, and that FPGA is running a fixed program or you can reprogram it? It, uh, it is running a particular firmware. Uh, you can reprogram it. We have the instructions on our documentation side. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead, grab the latest firmware, uh, program with the firmware that I have right now. That's for when version one. Or uh, you can like write your own firmware for it and run that. We have instructions on that as well. I think I've also added a video in there to like create your first FPGA blinky on this particular board. So yeah. Yeah. yeah so Guillermo, the yeah. Uh, what is the manufacturer of FPGA? Is Altera or something else? It's, it's Altera. So Guillermo, the um. We get. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna mute you for a second because we get feedback from you. Um, sorry. So the the this is the FPGA board. I just went upstairs and grabbed one. Um, but basically, uh, yeah. So to answer to answer your question again, I know Sahaj just answered it. But but the board ships with a with a like basically factory image on there. I guess you could call it that that already includes all the mapping. So essentially, what I was trying to explain earlier is that the 96 boards ecosystem, what we have is we have these two headers. 
at least right now, these two headers, the high speed header and the low speed header. This is kind of a mirrored image of the female ports over here. And then um, this snaps on top of your 96 board, right? So this would clip on top of your 96 board. And the, the FPGA uh, is pre-programmed to map both to the Raspberry Pi and to the Arduino headers. So this allows you to adopt the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino ecosystems. You could put a Raspberry Pi hat on here, or you can put an Arduino shield on here. Unfortunately, not both, right? You can't, can't do both, but, uh, but one or the other, and you could work um, through your you 96 boards. Could if you have the right extensions, you could. Uh, I guess that's true. The software or firmware uh, like stopping you from doing that, but. Yeah, you know what? You know what you could probably do is you could get one of those Raspberry Pi ribbon cables that breaks out to a little breakout board with a little breakout um, uh, PCB, and then you could put a shield on top. You could probably fit something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's th this. This is where this this starts to get very interesting because now you could utilize like what Sahaj is doing is utilize the uh, you know the little um, motor control shield that was already created for the Arduino ecosystem and then take all the power of a 96 boards have the Arduino drive those those motors and do kind of like some, more of like the real time or 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 uh, menial tasks let's call them while the while the uh, while the 96 boards does all of your heavy lifting when it comes to like you know camera AI anything like that Okay, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, my question was oriented to understand if I can potentially use it for other purposes, not necessarily for Arduino yeah. interface. Use yes, it. yes, it's it's fully pro it's fully programmable, and uh, and Sahaj has there's uh, I think it was Shiratech who provided us with instructions on how to program it, and then we're hosting it on ninety six words, right? Yeah, uh, I think we also have a video as well. Okay, cool. I, I'll search for the video for you, Guillermo. Yeah, um, and I have just plugged in the uh, relay mezzanine, uh, or well, it becomes a mezzanine when you plug it in, so I can probably call it a mezzanine now. Uh, but the relay shield and uh, has four relays, uh, pretty basic again, GPIO stuff. Uh, so I will go ahead and compile that in a second. Uh, in the meantime, if anyone has a question, go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any questions on there, but what we could do, I mean, unless Guillermo has any more questions, we could talk a little bit more about the, the uh, arrow campaign that we're, that we're working on while you get that set up. So um, it, what we would like to hear from you all is anyone who is already, you know, say familiar with 96 boards or who's already working in this, in this ecosystem, and has explored the line cart that Arrow has that, that they're working on for, for all of these 96 boards products, we'd like to hear kind of what videos you're interested in. And so Sahaj and I can, you know, ping the right people and get the right people on these calls so that we can, you know, uh, get this stuff going. I'll say right now, we have a very awesome episode planned for next week. Now, uh, it's gonna be a Valentine's Day special. So make sure you all put on whatever special heart shaped or <laughs> pink, <laughs> pink. I'll, I might wear like, you know, maybe I'll, I'll wear like a pink hoodie or something. I don't know, we're trying to make it Valentine's Day themed. We Usually when we try doing these things, it either ends up being really cool or like kind of, kind of lame, but we'll see how that goes when it comes to the theme. The topic itself is gonna be awesome. Um, we have a, we're gonna be joined by, as far as I know so far, we're gonna be joined by NXP, ARM, SysStart, and Aero Electronics, and we're going to be featuring the Oxalis Enterprise Edition board. This board was released last month, and it is an amazing board. It's already on the 96 Boards website. We're going to talk to all the partners involved in getting this board created, and how and how you know you can get access to it and use it. Also, we're going to hear from, uh, hopefully, hear from the um, right now. This is all tentative when it comes to the people who have confirmed them being there, but we're going to hear from Arm and hopefully find out you know, what they might use this board for in their offices and see what, you know, cool things um, our, our different partners would use this board for if they were working on it themselves, which I'm sure they are. So maybe we'll get some cool stuff from them on that. So the Exalus board, let me just share it real quick. 96 boards. You can find all these things if you just go to 96boards.org and then go to products. But 
this is the Excelis board. Boom, let's put it. I don't think I can share it in the YouTube channel unless I get on the 96 boards account, but I'll put it right here. Shared Excelis board. And then um, on, on the uh, boom, all panelists. Yeah, so that's what we'll be talking about next week with a Valentine's Day theme. Everyone show up, bring your, you know, Valentine's Day stuff. I'm interested to see. <laughs> my, my uh, demo. Yeah, money. Money's going to be doing a demo too. And it's going to be a Valentine's Day themed demo, right, money? Yep. <laughs> that's the one. Hey, don't bring your girlfriend. Wait, what? You're going to build, you're going to build a, a robot no, girlfriend? No. <laughs> no, I asked you to not bring your girlfriend for the episode. Oh, okay. I won't. I won't. Carla, you're not invited. <laughs> She's upstairs getting ready. Cool. So, um, yeah, the. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, I have the relay on there. I don't really have anything attached to the relay. I didn't want to play with means voltage, voltage on a live demo. So uh, let's see if this works. And you should be able to hear if I bring the mic close enough. A bit of relay noise. So I, I heard that yeah. the little clicks. Yeah. Uh, and it works fine. It's just a simple four relay board, uh, something that you might want to use for IoT stuff, home automation, basically. Um, yeah. So what could you use this board for now? Let's think. Putting a relay board on a 96 board, 96 boards could essentially be like, say, a gateway, like you said, kind of a, a, a smart home type thing. So you can use your 96 boards as the gateway, have all of the connectivity that you need, right? So you can connect to your router, you can connect to other devices that are around your house. Then you could also utilize um, the audio inputs that are there uh, in some of the 96 boards have some really good audio inputs, or you could simply stack an audio mezzanine there. So you could put an audio mezzanine sandwiched in between the FPGA mezzanine and um, sandwiched between the FPGA mezzanine and the, uh, the baseboard audio mezzanine between have all sorts of really cool, say like, you know, uh, uh, audio inputs coming in, then use the relay to turn stuff on and off. <laughs> <laughs> relay circuit relay uh, mezzanines or shields are pretty pretty basic, but you can essentially you know tell it to do something and then it'll just trigger the the action, right? I mean, yep. Um, so I, I guess let's get to the documentation uh, and see what we have on our website. So I share the screen once more. Uh, which one is it? Oops. Uh oh. And is that visible? Yeah, it's visible. Cool. All right, so this is the um, the index, and we have one, two, three, four, five guides here. The first one is interfacing with I squared C. This is kind of a just if you want to pass through I squared C on there, and uh, and so the first step is by default the I squared C pins are set as generic GPIO pins. So the first command just sets them in pass through mode. Uh, and that means your I squared C zero bus on the low speed header goes to the, um, to the high speed header, uh, to the Arduino header. And th uh, that enables you to then access every, every I squared C shield um, available. And we have a simple code for MPU 6050. Uh, and you can just use the MRA sample for that. And it just works. So all it does, you pass through it once and then just the regular MRAC code or UPM. Uh, so that's the basic one. Uh, and then this is uh, the entire Arduino GPIO. Uh, the one, uh, this is the library I was just using. This is the FPGA MES library. Uh, again, fairly work in progress right now. So things might change uh, and we'll uh, update the documentation accordingly. So I have the entire pin map. Um, here and then uh, we have a few macros that users might want to use and all the functions that are available uh, right now in the library. Uh, and this is the one you were asking about Guillermo. Uh, this is the entire video walkthrough of 
uh, getting your own firmware on the FPGA mezzanine. And the last one is the hardware setup. So that's also, uh, that's kind of a part one and part two here. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Is, is, was that all, were we gonna cover more than two, two shields or do we have, or do you have another uh, one? I do have one more. This is kind of a part of the project I was working on. So, so real quick, but before we do that third one, I, I just kind of want to, you know, touch on this. I, I've touched on this several times throughout history, but, um, you know, since you're bringing up this documentation stuff and the mezzanine pages and the guide that you're building out, this is somewhat of a new section that Sahaja started to build out um, within 96 boards. Essentially, uh, though, I would like to remind everyone that we are, we are actually completely open back end when it comes to the documentation and our entire 96boards.org website and the .ai website for that matter. So real quick, I'm just going to share my screen and just, you know, just show people, give them a quick little reminder about this. But basically, if you go to our GitHub, um, our GitHub website, our GitHub org, sorry, which is github.com forward slash 96boards documentation, you'll see all the documentation on here. This is just a repo that you can fork and clone onto your local machine and you can submit issues, you can submit pull requests and all of this stuff literally gets rendered identically up onto our website with some, with some you know, little aesthetic fixes and stuff that, that our web team has put together. But essentially you have whatever you put here, you know, view, you, know you click view boards right here if you do the same thing over here on a uh, on on this section view boards like you have the 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 repeat here's the github on the right and then here's the website on the left right you go visit visit dragonboard right here visit dragonboard documentation here you have all the dragonboard stuff and here you have all the dragonboard stuff so for people who are working on these boards this is what we encourage you to do is we encourage you to take we encourage you to take you know your boards and anything you're working on and that if you come up with little guides or you know helpful hints or things that might you know uh, ease people's other work that they're doing, uh, you know contribute to the repositories and you know we'd be glad to help review them with you, go over the stuff that you're working on, and our, our team is here to also do that kind of stuff as well. And then of course we have our 96 boards forums where you can post stuff too. So you know just kind of reminding everyone that this these channels exist, and I think. I think I should also just share anyway, since I have everyone on here, but we also have our new 96 boards discord channel. So the discord channel is actually a big deal because um, this allows you to get access to us right away. I'll share the discord channel. Uh, if you are already on discord, awesome, join us. If you're not already on discord, it's definitely a really cool uh, chat program that allows for all sorts of um, interactions and ways for us to label the different interactions that people have within the community uh, so yeah so i just shared the link there maybe i should share it on on youtube as well but now i can't find the browser window yeah so um we we have a, a question in the chat in on youtube sahaj it's from dean rose it says can you provide links to the three boards you discussed today yes we can so um sahaj will have to provide the links for the for the um for the Arduino boards, but I can definitely provide links for all of the 96 boards that we that we posted. Um, I believe the FPGA mezzanine is already up and for sale. Uh, we can post that, it's right over at aero.com. Uh, I'll post all those links right now. Yeah, and uh, Sistart, it looks like Sistart is on the YouTube channel as well. Sistart, you're gonna be here next week, right? We got we have a, a, an amazing episode talking about the Exalus board. So, that the that's going to be awesome. Uh, hopefully, we'll be joined by a whole group of partners uh, that help build that board. Let me. I have to log into the 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 ninety six boards channel here to get the Discord link shared on YouTube. So let's see. Boom, Discord. Join us on Discord. That's a that's a great way for us to get get uh get in touch. And then regarding the Axalis board that we talked about earlier. This is a link to that board on the 96 boards channel. So Oxalis. And then we talked about the FPGA mezzanine, which is the one that Sahaj is using 
for bridging the uh, the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi ecosystem. So, oh no, what did I click? I clicked the button and now, there we go. Okay, so FPGA mezzanine by arrow. That is that one. And then we have uh, the baseboard that you're using, Sahaj. Which one is that? The dragon board? I think you yeah. might be muted. Dragon board? Okay. So the baseboard that Sahaj is using is the dragon board 410C. This is another arrow board as well. And Sahaj, you're going to have to share the yes, I links to your message. Add in the next demo. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the, the other thing here is, you know, you see, uh, I shared this at the beginning, but um, we have the new arrow campaign page. So the new arrow campaign page talks about uh, or shows you all of the different boards that are available on the arrow line cart. So all 96 boards that are available through arrow. And this is a cool place because over time, I'm pretty much getting emails over, I feel like every week of just new boards that are gonna be coming out through Arrow. So this is a great place for you to land. Um, I'm, you know, obviously also go to 96boards.org, the product section in 96boards.org, land there as well. But Arrow campaign page, you'll find all the boards that Arrow has available as they come out. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think that looks good. I have too many windows open, so I lose. <laughs> Lose where I am. So which one are you doing now, Saj? Uh, so this is a part of uh, an upcoming project. Uh, it's, the main, it's the main. It's the main control board. The jukebox. Yeah. Yay! Uh, yeah, I was uh, I was waiting for the. Um, the audio jacks to be delivered. Uh, I didn't use the uh, audio mezzanine, which I'll talk about in a bit why. But Got this it. should. Uh, the idea is that you, oops. Um, yeah, you can actually enter a binary number like that. And you have a choice of 255 songs and you just play uh, or hit play, or I think one of them is play. But yeah, that's, that's the idea. You enter a zero or a one and it keeps on shifting. And then whichever number you want, you choose it that way. So, so uh, are, freshen, freshen so, but, up on binary. Yeah, refresh on your binary. But so the 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 question: Where are you gonna? Where's the audio coming out of? Like a, a, the 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 HDMI, uh, or are you gonna be no, throwing no, out somewhere I'm else? Using, I'm using the uh, audio header. Okay, cool. So, yeah, because so another is uh, I will actually switch over. So this is the audio machine, right? The the center header here is just a bit too large. Um, so although it has the headers and there are like some boards like uh, the, um, yeah, this one, the Bosch sensor machine again by Shiratech, but the board from the bottom, there, there's nothing much there. So it's a plain PCB. So that fits fine. But since you need a lot of uh, bypass capacitors uh, below the FPGA uh, on, on the other side, that doesn't really fit all that well. So that's fine because they're still maintaining the spec uh, and it's actually the, the uh, 2.5 mm header on the um, audio machine that's kind of an issue right now. So I've just ordered auto jacks. Yeah, the, uh, the, the crazy thing is that, you know, what was it? The audio mezzanine that came out, first of all, $5, really great yeah. price. <laughs> Again, through Arrow, right? They've been throwing out so much cool stuff, but, um, that that header didn't really so like they put like a raspberry pi header on there kind of but it wasn't a a uh mapping to the raspberry pi io mapping so you kind of it was a little confusing but um again one of the reasons why this new fpga mezzanine is yeah, off so there was a couple of problem um they have 
separate chips for I squared C level shifting. And these are pretty good chips. So the I squared C level shifting works really well. Uh, the problem happens when you're level shifting other uh, SPI or UART stuff, or even like GPO in, um, in general. Uh, and then those level shifters uh, don't really like uh, being shifted very fast, uh, you know, between 1.3 and 5 or 3.3 volts. Uh, so yeah, that that is what one of the issues was we were having with this board. So uh, Clint, yeah, I couldn't get the I, I couldn't the I two Cs at five volts weren't work, never worked for me, especially okay. with longer cables. Yeah, longer cables might also be an issue. The pull uh, pull up on the on the uh, on the level shifters might not be enough. Yeah, long cables yeah. have a problem that you have signal reflections and then everything got confused. So you need to put terminators. About everything getting confused, um, I just like sent in. I was I was setting this up and I kind of sent a, a pa panic chat to Mani. And what was happening? Uh, I had this uh, this shield in mind to test it with. Um, this has the L298P that the, the one I showed is an L298N. So very similar um, level shifters. I think it's like this one's like a low low profile one. And this so for some reason, the design of this was generating so much EMI. Uh, it like the I squared C would just crash. And uh, so uh, that would only happen when you have the motor connected to this. If you disconnect the motor, it works fine. Uh, it has like LEDs to uh, tell which, which motor is running in what direction. So you can see those working fine, but when you connect the motors, it would just crash. And that would also disrupt the Wi-Fi, which I noticed later. So there was something weird with this particular board. Uh, other boards just work fine, so. Nice, okay. Well, so um, Sahaj, I guess this is, this is all we have for demos. If there's any questions, we can take those. Uh, we got one more person that just joined in the Zoom chat. I don't see any questions in the YouTube channel. So I think the last thing that we could do here is just give a little bit of extra promotion for next week's episode and encourage everyone to join us because it's gonna be awesome. Um, we, we've, I don't think we've ever been joined by so many partners at once, Saj, can you recall of any? Because I mean, we're joined by four different partners at the same time to talk about one board. Uh, and I think that, you know, we're gonna get a lot of, you know, input from industry professionals from around the world. You'll get chances to talk about this, this cool board, the Exalis, which I've already shared the links to. Um, have we had have we had that many partners on it once before? I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> It'll be interesting to say the least. Uh, the other thing is to make sure you keep your eyes on. Oh, do I still have you? Okay, I don't have you pinned, but I should probably put this. Um, the other thing is to keep your eyes on the ninety six boards YouTube channel. You, you know, we're going to be pushing out lots of really fun videos, uh, promotional videos around each and every board on the arrow line cart so uh, we are getting our partners together putting them in a in a zoom call and we are directing these little videos and then sahaj is doing all this editing and we are pushing them out on a weekly basis so keep your eyes on that if you aren't already subscribed to our youtube make sure you do that um i guess the last thing i should announce if no one has any questions again please feel free to interrupt me but lenaro connect is right around the corner uh, we encourage everyone to check that out. And I know it's not easy to, to get a, a $2,500 badge and then fly all the way to Bangkok, Thailand. But uh, if you are truly um, interested in participating in Lenaro Connect and you have the means to get to Thailand and you would like to come to Lenaro Connect, please reach out to me. And I will do my best to get you a community badge because we are always looking for, you know, strong community members who are interested in participating in these activities. And at least I can try to shave off that $2,500 badge fee for, you know, a select number of, of community enthusiasts who are working with the 96 boards platform. So if you are interested, please contact me. You know, we can, we can do something like that. My email is robert.wolf at lenaro.org. And uh, you can you can reach me through there. Now, let me share the website real quick. It's connect.lenaro.org. 
connect.lenaro.org. And although the call for proposals is done, so you unfortunately we can't get any sessions hosted uh, anymore, the, uh, the call for demos is still up. So it's another reason if you are a community member and I can get you one of those free badges um, for the five day pass and you have the means to get to Thailand, not only is Thailand awesome, but you can attend one of the best open source arm open source conventions or conferences of the year literally like this is this is the place to be Lenaro Linux on arm uh, conference Lenaro connect so yeah let me know uh, the other thing what was I going to say here is that uh, um, we are looking for more people who would like to be on open hours so if you are interested in 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 participating if you have something to share uh, you know also reach out to me and we can get you uh, slotted in for one of these shows we usually are booked for like a month or two ahead of time so the sooner you let me know the better uh, and we'll get some, we'll get you in there. Guillermo, we still need to get you on, on one of these. <laughs> you need to show us all that cool work you've been doing with Windows IoT. Well, yes, I have a number of missing pieces here and there. So I need to, uh, this year, probably everything will come to air to a uh, product and it will be have something to show, hopefully pretty soon. <laughs> But yeah, it's been a long road. But uh, meantime, I, if you don't mind changing the, a little bit the subject, I, I'm thinking that uh, the 96 boards is doing a great job standardizing a form factor. There is a cadre of so many boards out there. So I wonder what is next in the future, or if you are okay. open for, for suggestions. So. <laughs> I, Hold a second. Yeah. So with that, with that question, actually, I can share a couple things. Um, so sorry, Jim. I'm just gonna have to mute you one more time because I don't know what what it is. The uh, oh, thank you. The like, there's some some feedback from your from your speakers to your microphone or something. But yeah. So uh, there are two big things that are up for discussion within the 96 board steering committee. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with the way that 96 boards works, 96 boards is a partner slash member funded organization within Lenaro. okay? Uh, Lenaro is of course, our parent company, Lenaro is 96, or 96 boards is Lenaro, right? But independently, we also have our own core group of partners. And what we call our core core group of partners, let's go like one level deeper, is our steering committee. And the steering committee makes all the decisions for the evolution of the 96 sports ecosystem. This is a big, this is a group of, you know, like big industry, uh, industry leaders that get to decide, that get together. They don't, they don't get to decide, but they get together. They take all the input from the community and they evolve our specification following industry standards and what we believe the developer community and our general community um, will benefit the most from. Now, one of the biggest things that I think will come out of this is this is something that would pertain to what you're talking about, Guillermo. Our specification evolution is going to start moving towards a more open model. Now, it's not to say that the community is going to be able to submit or make changes to the spec. However, we are in the process of trying to get the specification put onto an open source repository within GitHub or wherever we end up hosting it that will allow both version control and issue tracking. So essentially, if you have something that you would like to submit to our steering committee to be changed on our specification, you will be able to go to this repository, submit an issue, we will gather all these issues, bring them to the steering committee, and then see if we can start issuing these things. Like for instance, one of the biggest things that people were complaining about for, for a while was the fact that we should add the UART the ability to tap into the serial console directly on the board instead of just having instead of making you get a mezzanine to be able to do that or getting a special cable um, enforcing that in the specification this is something that the community has wanted for a while and so these little things that need to be brought up from the community will be brought to the steering committee because our voting and evolving the spec that's number one number two and i think this one is the most important one that people will be interested in the most because as 96 words was originally started we were kind of priding ourselves on uh, upstream 
upstream, upstream, everything upstream. You know, that's what we want. We want the boards to be all upstream. And so what we're working on is a concrete and solid uh, roadmap for software compliance um, for all of our new boards. So essentially, um, when someone wants to release a 96 board, the process that they have to go through is with us at 96 boards, they have to go through a compliance checklist. And this is this is well, well known since we first started. You have to be 96 boards compliant to be a 96 boards. Now, in a lot of cases, you know, certain chipsets don't don't comply with every single aspect of the 96 board specification, but you have to get within a certain threshold for you to be declared a 96 boards. That being said, that was only a hardware compliance. Now what we're talking about is a official software compliance. And what this will require is certain things need to be done in the software stack in the upstreaming effort uh, prior to you being able to be called a 96 board. And you have to have a solid roadmap for the following year to continue your upstreaming efforts to an ultimate, ultimate fully upstream board. Now that's something that we're working on. I can't obviously guarantee that this is going to happen. This is all has to be done by the steering committee. It has to be approved. And, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts that go into this. Things might have to get changed. However, the ultimate idea is that, you know, we want to make things more accessible to everyone. And we want to make these things more accessible to the different partners and software communities um, that might want to enable certain things or get these boards used for different development environments. And that's the idea, right? So, uh, you know, having things upstream definitely helps. And, uh, and yeah, so I don't know, do you have any, was that kind of any, any other comments on that, Guillermo? Well, yes, I think that uh, it is uh, very encouraging to see that you are going to a more robust uh, ecosystem. Uh, enforcing uh, minimum compliance is important. Uh, and I would suggest to keep a closer eye on the uh, board support packages so we don't repeat the experience we have with Qualcomm and the lack of interest in supporting other things uh, that besides Linux. Uh, and uh, what I was thinking is also probably in the form factor maybe uh, room for the next spec. I think that my suggestion is to look into the model size, maybe half the size of the card without any uh, direct connectors. So you can specify a module that is maybe an inch and a half by one inch, just that kind of size, and uh, a daughter board for development. And then that will be a a uh, mode that can be directly plugged in into uh, any final product and uh, you a standard uh, way of producing a model and you are not dealing with a particular model for one particular vendor that if you don't want to buy thousand pieces of pieces doesn't respond your emails and things like that uh, so um Two things on that, and that's great. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that idea, and it's something that we've been exploring for a while. One of these things is that the you're going to be in for a very pleasant surprise, and I'm hoping that it is this month, but basically what you're asking for is literally about to happen with one of our boards. All right, so um, you, you're going to hopefully be in for a surprise. Now, they're still working on all, you know, the – ups and downs of, of, of releasing this type of board. So there's a lot of still stuff still going on, but um, I think it's gonna be awesome. I have one of them already and I'm truly impressed. So, so I can't talk about it though, unfortunately, but just be prepared for some really cool stuff, hopefully this month. Number two is that um, this is kind of the idea behind the SOM spec. So 96 boards has a SOM spec. I know we've been talking about it for years, right? Probably at least a year now, but the SOM specification, from what I understand, is going through its final reviews. Again, this comes down to the steering committee. When you gather all these industry professionals together and you want to release a spec that, that, and I know you understand this, Guillermo, but I'm also explaining it for anyone else who's watching. But like when you get all these people together, you know, certain things matter more to certain companies than others. And so each person wants to give their input and make sure that that aspect they're, they're the best at this one thing. And this, this company is the best at this one thing. And so they want to make sure that each one of these aspects is the best 
possible component or best possible aspect of the spec, right? And so it does take a while to go through these review processes. Now that we have um, the spec for the most part vetted through our steering committee, I suspect that we will be seeing um, or hearing more about this release or possibly have it released um, at the next connect. And these are kind of like the milestones of the year for Lenaro. Um, I know, I think I said the exact same thing before the last connect about the SOMSEC, but again, I'm really hoping that this is, this is the connect that it happens at. Um, this is when all the big announcements happen is that connect. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it is exciting. I'm excited about it. People will rather than, so it's kind of the opposite. 96 boards, you have your baseboard spec with a mezzanine. The SOM spec is going to be, you have your SOM spec, and then people can build baseboards around the SOM. So you'll end up with all these different baseboards with a with a 96 boards preferred guidelines, but the, the SOM will be what you're working with, and you can plug the SOM onto all these different types of baseboards. That'll be kind of like the, the next step for the SOM uh, evolution. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah, really the, yeah cool yeah because then I, that that's that's kind of like what what i'm interested in as well right you know um you're taking like for instance what we're talking about one of these 96 boards baseboards consumer edition boards but you can't put this in a product right not only that is like when you get to a certain stage right like you go from development board possibly put it in your product with a few thousand units and then you're like okay well now i need to explore a psalm then you put a SOM in there and then, okay, then a hundred thousand units or whatever, 10,000 units. And you're like, okay, well now the SOM's too expensive. Let me do a chip down design. So you get to a certain, certain point in each level of, of the products that you're putting out, but yeah, that should be, there's a lot of cool stuff happening this year. I I'm excited. All right. Well, I think that this is it. Nothing popped up on, on you tube i don't oh to start that is very interesting is there a public roadmap for these developments yes and no so uh there is somewhat of a public roadmap uh you know we make these announcements on open hours we talk about them on social media and sometimes we release blogs through both winaro and 96 boards however um a lot of this information and the evolution itself and the the actual editing before certain release part uh, certain release dates about these specs and the things I'm talking about, um, they're regulated by the steering committee. So uh, in order to be, in order to, to get uh, access to some of these items um, before they're made public, uh, you have to be on the steering committee for, for that. Um, and there are, we have membership models for that, but, um, but uh, it, kind of, it, it kind of depends on if that's of, of interest to someone, to anyone. Um, can you spell the can you spell the spec or acronym, please? So uh, yeah, so SOM we we have ninety six boards has right now three three official specifications. It's EE, which is Enterprise Edition, um, CE, which is Consumer Edition, and then IE, which is IoT Edition, and then the next ones that are coming up are SOM, which is or S SE. So, so -E? I think it's SE, which is SOM edition. Uh, da -da, SOM. Is it just SOM? You know, maybe maybe Sahaj is right. Maybe it's just SOM. SOM edition. And then there's going to be another one, which was, I believe, announced two connects ago or one connect ago, which is automotive. That's going to be hot. Automotive edition. Right now, completely dominated by, by uh, you know, a couple a couple, you know, industry company, a couple big companies, com the automotive, you know, uh, development industry is just dominated by like one or two people. What we want to do is we want to open that stack a little more to people. We want to provide open source development environments for people to start working on automotive related projects. And this is kind of the goal. Um, well, it's one of many goals, but um, essentially I think that that's going to be pretty awesome to get, you know, low cost, low lead time, uh, development hardware in the hands of developers who want to start working on automotive stuff. And I think that, that that's what we're kind of trying to get to now. <sighs> did I talk, did I talk a lot? Was, every time after open hours, like my brain just goes, shut off time, go get a beer. But, and it's like 9am <laughs> and I already want a beer. Okay. Um, 
thank you everyone for joining us. It, it has been a pleasure. Everyone on YouTube, uh, you know, please check back next week. We have an amazing episode. I'm not kidding. It's going to be an amazing episode. And you're going to get to learn a lot about the Oxalis board and all of the partners that were involved in making it. Now, uh, for, for uh, the last bit of anything I'll share with you is to make sure that you subscribe to our newsletter. That link is in the description. Unfortunately, it won't let me share it in the YouTube chat, even as the, the YouTube admin. I don't know why that is, maybe because it's not a secure link. Either way, um, it's through MailChimp. So, you know, we'd love to have you subscribe to our newsletter. We send out one newsletter a month. So it's not even that big of a deal, the first week of the month. And you haven't missed this month's yet. We'll be sending it out later tonight or tomorrow. Um, and then, uh, you know, make sure you join us on Discord. Check out 96boards.org for more information. Subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me at robert.wolf at lenaro.org. Sahaj, did I miss anything? No, um, nailed it. All right, man. You're awesome. Thank you so much, Sahaj, for the demos today. Um, did you have any last things to, to, to add? Um, yeah, just uh, there's, a, there's a very special Raspberry Pi hat I'm looking forward to, uh, to working on, and that would be there at Connect. So. Lenaro Connect. Oh, shoot. Ah, oh, gosh, dang it. An hour is not enough time. Okay, uh, Lenaro Connect also, just so you know, we'll mention this again in the next episodes, but we're gonna be doing a lot of really cool work on Mozilla IoT. Okay, so I didn't even mention this, but we're in the process of working with Mozilla and Fedora to enable a really cool um, kind of stack, uh, hardware OS application layer with Mozilla IoT. And there will be a lot of things coming out. Uh, we'll be showcasing a lot of stuff at Lenaro Connect around this. And, um, and hopefully in the, next, in the next couple of months leading up to Lenaro Connect, we will have opportunities to showcase this stuff um, paired up with a variety of, of 96 boards using the Fedora images, Fedora IoT images that Peter Robinson has been working on. Watch last week's episode and the Mozilla IoT framework. So yeah, check that out. All right, I'm gonna turn off the recording now. Thank you everyone. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you everyone on, on Zoom. Uh, how do I do this? Turn off recording. Stop live stream.